the best Nintendo game I have ever played. Hi. <laughs> if you didn't watch part one, you should go and watch that first. Did a lot of really fun stuff, bought a load of Switch games, went to a store called Super Potato, <laughs> went to a Pokemon Center. So many things happened, and if you missed it, you're gonna hate yourself. So please, go and watch that video before watching this one. If you watched that one already, good job. I love you, thank you, proud of you. <laughs> Still in Japan, obviously, and today, I'm gonna take you through whatever this is. But first, let's take a look at what's about to happen. <laughs> What else is great? ExpressVPN and Apple Pie. And what perfect timing for ExpressVPN to sponsor this video, by the way. Got a camera there and a camera here, because we're going to Japan, Kimberly and I. Being Americanized now, and her being American, we don't want to miss out on our favorite things when we want to have them. And Bob's Burgers just started again on Hulu. We don't want to miss it while we're in Japan. In fact, you can't even watch Hulu outside of Japan. At least not without ExpressVPN. On a very serious note for a second, you can't go online these days without a VPN. ExpressVPN can and will prevent and anyone and anything from getting your username, passwords, credit card information, and more. Especially while using those pesky public Wi-Fis. And that's one of the cool things ExpressVPN can do. It can take you and put you in any place you want to be in at the touch of a button. You want to place yourself in Australia because they get games 24 hours before anyone else and download games a day early? You can do that. And it's all somehow less than $7 a month. So take back your internet privacy today. <laughs> You can get a whopping three months free if you use my specific code down below in that description box. ExpressVPN.com forward slash beat-em-ups. I, I want me to say that again because I will. ExpressVPN.com forward slash beat-em-ups. You get three months free. What a deal. <laughs> so look, no matter where you're from, it's time to have your pie and eat it too. And you can do that with ExpressVPN. So day three begins and we find ourselves in the middle of Shibuya and I cannot think of the word, the name, the place Shibuya without saying out loud Shibuya downtown. Where are we? Not sure. <laughs> We're at Shibuya Crossing and uh, guys behind us filming their own little internet show too so it's like a cross collab if you know them. I don't. And this area right here is Shibuya Crossing which is a little famous landmark, it's where people Cross, it's always really busy. So we have people crossing here, we have Mario Kart racers belting their way down the street. We even have a fan that recognized me in the middle of this area, which completely blew my mind. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> just like that? Yeah. <laughs> this guy plays the ocarina and he plays it freaking well. And he just recognized me in the middle of, Sh where are we, like Shibuya? Uh, Shibuya, Shibuya. Okay. Yeah. Wow, apparently I'm pronouncing it completely wrong. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Sure, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Look it up, yeah, he's I'll, really yeah. good. And he's handsome as heck. <laughs> no, I would cut that part of Nope. <laughs> this is maybe the fourth or fifth time someone spotted me here in Japan. And I know I made a big to-do that I was going, but I still didn't think that anyone would recognize me here. And it's just been really heartwarming. Who doesn't deliver pizza to a phone box? Kim went to the Disney store and she might do a whole thing of that on her channel. It was like a three floor Disney store. Not for me, but Kim had fun. That was nice. <laughs> I love the jar. <laughs> I would say there's two things that Kim and I have been really excited for on this trip. One would be Disney and the other was the Pokey Cafe. This place you have to book a month in advance. So we, we've known about this reservation now for a month and we have just been so high. We've been watching videos on this place, getting ready to know what to expect and it definitely lived up to the hype. Minus one thing, but it was still my favorite experience of this trip. So okay, far. this is probably the best thing we've done so far. I'm really excited. I'm just full of like glee. This food is awful, <laughs> but just the fact of what it is is making it awesome and it doesn't matter. You get to pick your food and everything is Pokemon themed. You get to keep your placemat, and it was a seasonal themed Halloween placemat. <laughs> 
It's the pico I bought. Hey, it's cute. Then the plate you eat on, you can pay to keep it if you want. I don't want the plate. I don't want to have to try and take the plate home, but I did get a coffee and you could pay to get an Eevee or Pikachu mug and then you can keep the mug. You can also pick what print is on your coffee. Oh, I also got a Gengar slush and that was really cool. Oh, and Rachel got the pancakes because I wanted to see them. I actually asked her to get the pancakes. Draw it yourself? I love drawing. <laughs> This is part of it. Actually, not terrible. Stuff. That is not yeah. bad. Thanks, guys. You're so supportive. Honestly, you nailed it. <laughs> Great job. I think you did get the one where you have to do it yourself because it's on like a palette. You know, oh, they yeah. should have wrote that in English <laughs> on the menu. <laughs> was all really cool to look at and it was adorable but it, it honestly really did taste just awful <laughs> i can typically get by eating whatever but this food was it was bad i would say the main food the pikachu and eevee plates were edible the coffee was absolutely the worst coffee i've ever had but the worst offender <laughs> was the pancakes these reactions i think say enough we should explain the situation for the vlog then. I'm gonna do like a whole thing. <laughs> Just regret in your eyes. Cabbage? <laughs> it's cauliflower. It smelled like cauliflower and it tasted like cauliflower, but like just not good. Not I honestly, good. I have a theory. Pikachu himself is actually the chef and this is just what he thinks food is for humans and he's wrong. <laughs> but Pikachu came out <laughs> and he was adorable and I got to shake his hand. <laughs> about this place that was just so wholesome and so fun and so cute and adorable and being here with Kim and friends it was hard to not be filled with so much love that I, I got a tiny bit emotional <laughs> It was just, it's so, it's so weird to explain, but it was just a really, really nice moment. And I'm, I'm just so glad that Kim and I got to share that together. But again, this is our first vacation and it was just really nice. Right. So yesterday we went to a Pokemon Center. This is the Pokemon Center. It's bigger, it's better, it's more exciting, and it's just over there. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, it didn't end up being the Pokemon Center. I, I don't know, I assumed that this was the big one, mostly because it said DX and it was attached to the Pokemon Cafe. It was just kind of almost like a gift shop to the Pokemon Cafe. They did have way more plushies. It was like plushie central. This one actually had all the first 150. They had a really cool Tony Stark style glass wall where you could look up information on every Pokemon. So there was a lot of cool things about this Pokemon Center, but for the most part it was, I liked the last one more. There's apparently still an even bigger one that I haven't been to as of yet. I found, this. I think this is my secret favorite Pokemon. Like I love all the Eevees, but I've always been attached to Dratini. It's adorable. And then Kim got a bunch of stuff. This legit looks like her. So we had to do it. It is so cute. It's a girl Pikachu as well, with bangs. Then we went back to Akihabara and spent the night there. Looking, of course, for video games. <laughs> It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, the sticker's peeling a little bit, but like... No, it's really good. It's you, nice. you never see stuff like that. No, I'm well, I mean, <laughs> we don't because we're no. not from here, but... <laughs> no, but like, we never see like vintage Nintendo like cases and stuff. Yeah. Like, nobody keeps those at home. So Akihabara has apparently a bunch of retro stores just right on the main street. And I want to say the only reason I'm not getting this is because I'm just vastly running out of money fast. But I want it. A part of me kind of wishes I didn't get that Eternal Darkness and got this instead, but no regrets because I'm there having fun. There was even more things on this main strip of street, like more stores of games and, and figures and all anime that we haven't managed to even get to yet, so we're gonna do this. What you got? Speak up to. Boobs. Oh, cool. Alright, you buying that? Yeah. 
And you seem like a boot guy. I'm seeing a lot of things that I like, a lot of things that I want, a lot of things at my price range. This entire trip, I've been trying to find a store that not only has Switch games, but has the big box Switch games. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> This is dangerous. Trust me, I would have gone straight it's for beautiful. that if I didn't already have that one. Oh no. Oh yeah. I need to leave. This is the store I've been waiting for for oh, three days. I think yeah. I have to get at least this. Yeah. I'm not even. I haven't. I didn't even. I, I know. <laughs> I didn't even like. My brain hasn't yet. He literally can't even. Realized. He's the whitest girl. But there's so many Switch games here. I can't even right now. For all my excitement, this is actually a little higher than if I just stayed at home and ordered it on Amazon. So this store wasn't a bust, but I might not get anything. This is why you never settle people. <laughs> they have it here too for $16. It's literally less than half the price. And this one, I don't know if it's been resealed, but it's, it's still sealed. So I'm gonna get it here. That's awesome. I'll be honest, all the figures at this point, I'm getting a bit burnt out on them. Tyler and Kim are still going strong looking at all these figures. I am very much tapped out. However, Kim and Tyler are looking around for figures on one of these floors and I'm just along for the ride and I accidentally see a Dragon Quest figure. Everywhere we've been has been figures, figures, figures to the point where I am burnt out on figures. This is so cool. Look at it. it Super cool. It's perfect. And the metal slime, and I looked it up online, the cheapest I could find it was 90 on Amazon. This is 68, which works out to what, like 65? Look at the fish. Look at that thing. Look at the silver slime. I do like Look at the detail on his face and his hair. My collection of Dragon Quest stuff this trip is growing. I am buying a figure. <laughs> then, as I said, Kim and I have been playing Pokemon Go this entire trip. And I got a little notification on my phone that said Mewtwo will be popping up for the next hour. Can I just point out that there so, 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 so. is all these people and we are still having the whisper to be able to no, 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 no. not be loud. be loud. And we're literally about to go to war with the other side of the street and it's still this quiet. Like how is it still this quiet? Can you imagine coming here and being a loud person? Just totally obnoxious, throwing fish at cars. Having a horrible haircut. Having a horrible haircut. Like what kind of child would do something like that? We are in the middle of Akihabara. If I can't get a damn U2 now, I ain't getting one. And sure enough, we walked to the closest one and there was hundreds of people around this corner catching a Mewtwo to the point where Kim and I entered the raid at the same time and there were so many people filling up the lobbies that Kim and I didn't even get into the same lobby. That's one of mine now. It's gonna happen though. Oh, okay. So yeah. cool. Yeah, he's almost halfway over. Oh, but then God. you gotta try and catch him. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh. So Kim is... Oh, yeah. just Kim just got him. I'm still trying. You should be able to get him. He's almost I get seven more shots. Oh, you got a great throw. That's probably. I only have like two more attempts at this. I know. Oh, I did it. Go on. Yes. I'm so happy. I am like two Pokemon away for the first 150 being done. Face of a winner. Didn't think I was gonna get it. I was down to my last two or three balls because I kept missing and I managed to get myself a Mewtwo. And then Stupid Tyler, who hasn't played the game in like a year, relearned his password and login in time to catch a shiny Mewtwo. We all pretty much universally agreed that this day was our favorite so far. Despite this was the most tired I've been so far, it was just the happiest and coolest and nicest and lovely day we've had so far. It was so good. So. Uh, right now is the fourth day. The start of this day was really chill. Kim and I hung out in the local area of Ikibukuru. We went to an internet cafe and we were given this really awesome private room. I loved this place. It had padded floors, we could watch TV, use high speed internet, which is why we were there, read as much manga as we liked, there was even free drinks. We spent all day here because I was uploading that first vlog you've already seen for my editor Vinny to edit. I am up uploading uh, files to my editor for a video, then while we wait for the uploads to upload, we're watching Netflix. 
literally using ExpressVPN. You know, it's funny because before we left the house today to come here and upload the video we are now sending him, <laughs> we did like a fake, you know, B-roll. We were just kind of shooting me, pretending to use ExpressVPN because we were on the way out. We weren't actually watching it. But right now, we are actually using it. And we just thought it was funny that we've gone from that to this. Thanks, ExpressVPN. I'm sure you can click that link below and <laughs> get something. <laughs> Tell the class again what you're Don't you, you be say. judging me right I'm now. not judging you. I think it's very clever. I don't like that I keep having to make people try to understand me. I feel really rude because I haven't even been using arigato because I just feel like I'm going to pronounce it wrong but apparently it's better to just do it even if you pronounce it wrong because they appreciate that you're trying. But I wanted to learn a little bit more so I've spent the last two hours in this room learning five words. I just showed Kim that I've made them my lock screen so if I ever need to cheat sheet I just need to get my phone out and there's my little cheat sheet of just some basic words. Please, onigaishimasu. No, daijabu. Yes. Hi, thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Excuse me, send me my sen. Do you remember the five in English? Hi. Oh no. You did it, you threw me off so much. Oh. You, you said yes. So, I, I, I mean, good, you know, yes. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. Well, good, to, we're learning, well, we're I, adapting. Yeah. We didn't know if today was going to end up being a write-off or not, but luckily, we ended up getting out of here early enough to hit Jinjuku and find what is, for sure, the best Nintendo game I have ever played. And it was in an arcade. Oh, man, I can't even just completely describe how fun this game was. I've never been an arcade guy, and the one thing on an arcade I've never loved was the coin pusher games. I love them in concept, but I hate putting coins into them and then them not pushing enough forward for me to get any coins back and I feel like I've just wasted my money. But this coin pusher was off the wall crazy. At its core it was Mario Party and you sit around this huge arcade machine with a bunch of other players. We were sat at the Peach station so we were playing as Peach, although it was still Mario being represented on the screen. You pay $10, they give you like hundreds of these coins to just start throwing into the slots and you try and hit them into the colored slots. If you do that, you get a dice roll and you get to move along the Mario Party board. If you land on a circle square space that has a brick block, you can smash it and you might get an item from it or more coins. Let's say you get 10 coins, it'll actually throw those coins into the coin pusher, moving things forward and probably give giving you more coins to play. So that base mechanic in itself had us playing with this $10 buy-in that we had for about half an hour. On top of that, we kept hitting mini games. I'm not really sure what triggered them, but they were awesome. There was baseball, like actual Mario Slug is baseball, where the coins you were throwing in, you'd have to try and hit the colored slots. You could either strike out if you hit a red space or get a home run if you hit a home run space. There was even one-on-one -on -one versus fights as you went along and then my favorite thing was there was actual Mario Kart. I'm not sure what triggered this, but it had me and all the other players around the coin pusher racing each other in Mario Kart, and I came first. And every time you do one of these mini games, it throws you back into the Mario Party world after with bonuses from the mini game, and it throws those bonuses in coin style, and it's just like hundreds and hundreds of coins being thrown in. It's exhilarating. I don't even know where to end this story on this thing because it just doesn't end. The actual physical machine itself had a claw machine in it and if you land on a bonus claw machine space you get to have a shot at moving the actual physical claw it'll pick up a ball and throw it onto your field. Then if you throw in enough coins to push a ball off into your little pocket thing near you it'll trigger a jackpot that'll have another ball spin around a jackpot thing and you can get way more coins that way and if you hit the actual jackpot I think that's what takes you up into the very top of this machine, but unfortunately we didn't ever hit that and we never saw anyone hit that, but I really wanted to know what happened up there. There was candy items like in Mario Party 8, I believe, where you could turn into 8-bit Mario or Bull Mario and you just demolish the field. It was like all of the Mario games from GameCube combined into one Mario Party mishmash and it was stupid fun. And we spent all night there playing this thing until we were good and tired and we went home and went to bed. So, I hope you're still enjoying these because there's at least one more to come. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I love them. I love doing them. And I love you.
So you subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. We're going to somewhere new tomorrow that we haven't been before.